Rob Parker. What's up, man? What's happening, Chris Broussard? Let's uh, give you a warm welcome back to the Odd Couple. Thank uh, you, my man. You were all for, uh, you had vacation, and then unfortunately during your vacation, uh, tragic news. And I, I want everybody, we, we mentioned it on Friday that your dad had passed, Chris. Uh, tell us about your dad a little bit before we get started with the show. And I know it's traumatic. I lost both of my parents and your dad and mom had moved in with you guys. So, you know, you spent yeah. even more time with them later in life, which is awesome. But just give us a little bit of tell, tell us a little bit about your dad, because it's a, it's a tough thing. Yeah, man, I appreciate it. Yeah, my dad, Edward Broussard, uh, passed on uh, Monday, uh, December 26th, the day after Christmas, obviously. And uh, as you said, he had been living with us for the past year. Him, he and my mom, because he had stage four cancer of the esophagus, and uh, and then he caught COVID mm. and picked up pneumonia while <laughs> probably from the COVID. So he was battling all three. He fought valiantly, but you know he died. Um, actually, holding my mom's hand and my Which brother. Which is a beautiful and I. thing. Yep, That's a beautiful yep. thing. Married fifty-seven real. years. My parents and uh, my brother and I were there with our wives, and my kids were there. So uh, we spent Christmas with him. He couldn't really talk, but he you could see he could respond to the gifts we gave him and oh, nice. all that stuff. So he was a great dad, man. Uh, and you said that there were three things, Chris. I read your post on Instagram that he instilled in you. Just share that with yeah. everybody. Yeah, he, he told me this about a year or two ago that the three guiding principles of his life were uh, to love the Lord, to love and take care of your family, and to have fun. And uh, he did all three. And, um, you know, man, it was, you know, he was just, I'm not, I'm not here today without him. And obviously, I mean, he, he, you know, I came from him. But, I mean, like the way he raised me, the things he taught me, Right. He helped me write my papers when I was younger in terms of learning how to write, learning how to, you know, like he, he was good at English. So he helped me with all of that. And uh, obviously sports was huge in our family. He taught me, you know, he coached me when I was a kid, played ball with us, football, basketball, baseball, all that. All that. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, man, just a great dad. And uh, we'll be down. I'll be off Thursday and Friday. We'll go down to uh, Louisiana, where most of my family on both sides is from. Right. He was born in rural Louisiana, and we'll have a funeral down there in Baton Rouge. Well, and again, so, uh, from yeah. everybody, love and prayers to the Broussard family. Great to have you back for these days, and uh, I don't think it would be cool to even start the new year. Happy New Year to everybody or Happy the show. New year. Yeah, yeah, without letting everybody know where you've been, what's been going on. But uh, as we know, Chris is a professional, and – and uh, the show goes on, and yep. there's no reason we're going to – Chris is ready to work, ready to go, and uh, there's a lot of stuff to talk about, Chris. So let's welcome in the crew and get this show started. I'm ready to chomp the bit. In the preseason, of course, as always, we made our preseason predictions for the NFL. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, you picked Baltimore in the AFC. That's correct, right? Yep, Baltimore and Green yep. Bay. Yeah, and uh, I picked bu uh, Buffalo and Green, and Green Bay. And, of course, we both, I mean, you know, we, we wrote off the Packers. Let's just keep it real. Well, especially uh, you. It was la so bad. The last time we talked, you didn't think that they – I was like they still had a shot only until they're eliminated because I looked at the schedule, Chris – and I just said, I don't remember teams, all that. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. I don't remember all that. Oh, oh hold up. They no, got, no, they no. Got a shot. I, hey, I, we'll maybe get the that tape. was when I was gone. No, we'll get the tape because you said they're yeah, not you making get the, the tape. You're, you said, no way are they making the playoffs. I remember it distinctly. But anyway. Yeah, I mean, I one definitely thing, didn't think they were, but I think we both were on the same no, page. I, I, but, no, I, I still, because of when they had a chance in the schedule. But this is the thing I will say that both of us did say about the Packers that they would be a work in progress and would get better as the season went on. Did, did we right. not say that? Like, yep. like yep. that was the – I didn't think they'd have a great regular – I thought they'd win about 11, 10 or 11 games. Right. But we thought – Because they had the won 13 every year the last right. three years or whatever. So they were definitely going to take a step down, not be that team, but that they would be better 
as the season goes on, and they're in position. I mean, can they beat the Lions at home? Absolutely, and make the playoffs and win. What would it be? Six in a row to to make the playoffs. Well, that would, would be you, five in a row. Five in yeah, a row. Five in a row. Five in a row. That would be an incredible where, where that season was and that five game losing streak and how terrible they were and the teams they lost to. It would be some turnaround. It would, and it's interesting, Rob, because in in, in a certain sense, like had they had a you know they hadn't gone through that what was it a five six I game a, losing streak? I think it was five six, uh, five games. Had they right? not had the five game losing streak, um, just making the playoffs. Like if this were a normal year and they were you know en route, en route to winning eleven or twelve games, just making the playoffs would not have been anything to sing about. But now if they make it, it will feel like an accomplishment just that they made it. Uh, And I'll tell you this, Rob. First of all, let me say this. I, I I thought, and I'm picking the Packers to beat Detroit. And I'm sure you are. You already have because you said you thought Detroit would lose out. Uh, even though right. that, that hasn't happened, but even know, though it hasn't happened, right? And and that big game against Carolina was the game for them, Chris. That was a huge game. Yeah, the Detroit is tough, and that and that's what I was gonna say is Rob. I didn't. I thought that Aaron Rodgers was a tad too self congratulatory at the post game press conference yesterday. Again, I, I don't think it'll necessarily come back to bite him, but I thought you know. The where, you know, all these people were talking when we were four and eight, five and eight, six and away, eight. We we don't have to worry about us, blah, blah, blah. What are they going to say now? Well, the job's not done. I thought he talked like the job was done, Rob. And Detroit is legit. Detroit obviously beat the Packers earlier in the year. You saw what they did to Chicago. So I mean, they're Minnesota a good team. They beat, won seven of nine. Beat, Minnesota beat uh, Green Bay, too. Earlier no, no, year. I'm not saying they can't. I'm just saying he they better not take Detroit lightly. I, and I, I didn't like the attitude of him that it just seemed like he was counting it like we made it. I told y'all we we're going to run the table. You didn't believe in us and we made it. And uh, I well, hope because, again, we, we pull for our picks. I hope it doesn't come back to bite him. And I think they'll get him at Lambeau. Right. But that was something that. That raised my eyebrows yesterday. The only thing I thought that was interesting too is in the post game he did like thank uh, the Browns, like he because they couldn't do it by themselves. They no, needed, they needed help. Yeah, they needed right. help. And I and the first thing out of his mouth was thanks to the Cleveland Browns. Like like they beat Washington that even gave us a chance to right. be in this spot. And then they totally took control of the game against Minnesota. You know their defense, Chris, has been very opportunistic. What do they have, six interceptions the last two games? Yeah, they've had four takeaways in each of the last two. Yeah, so I, I, I mean. So, six interceptions, what, th- two fumble recoveries? No, I, I thought they had three interceptions of uh, Obviously had Kirk the Cousins, punt return. and they had three against tattoo, uh, uh, Tua. But anyway, yeah. my point is. Yeah, well, and that's the thing. They've beaten good teams. Miami, yeah. even though they're stumbling, still is a good team. Uh, and Minnesota. Tua and Minnesota. I mean, pounded Minnesota. And so I, I, I'll say this, Rob. If they get in, and I said this last week or week, two weeks ago on TV, if they get in, I think they're dangerous. I think they're dangerous because, one, they will have been on a five-game win streak, which is incredibly impressive. And, again, that's beating Miami, Minnesota, and Miami on the road, Detroit. Right. And right. so those are three good teams they would have beaten. The defense, to your point, has definitely improved, and we all thought it'd be a top, you know, ten defense. At we least. did, Chris, going into going the into season. season, and yep. it wasn't early on; they couldn't no. stop anybody. So nope. now it's kind of gelled, and and they have what you're talking about being dangerous. A a defense, right, which is big in the playoffs. Yep. Chris, if you can run the ball and ball, right. ball control time on the clock, you limit the other quarterbacks' possessions if you can run the football, and then you do have Aaron Rodgers who can make a third down or make a throw that you need to have. You know, it's not like can he make a throw. So those are – he doesn't have to throw for 400 yards. Those three things are great. And on top of that, Rob, you got a quarterback that – 
I know he, he struggled, and I've pointed this out a lot in the past, but he struggled in NFC title games. But for the most part, his track record is he's not going to make a mistake to cost you the game. Right. It's like, he's, never you know, been Jimmy that. G or, you know, some of these other quarterbacks, Dak, you got to worry. Oh, they, they might throw the big pick. You know, he, I mean, his whole career, he's been the guy that doesn't make mistakes for the most part in terms of interceptions. So those four things you mentioned, Rob, those factors, three plus the one I said, right. that's a good recipe for it. Now, I'm not predicting, I'm not saying they should be the favorites. No, no, no. Because it looks the like they probably open up with San Francisco, which would be tough, right? Going there, they'd probably be the uh, underdog, as they, I think they should be. But in this year's NFC, Rob, where San Francisco's great, but they got a quarterback that, has played well in the regular season, but we don't know how he's going to respond. And we saw a little playoffs. bit yesterday, a little bit yesterday against the Raiders. He played with, well, he, right. but he he you know he played well when they needed the pressure. But Rob, we've seen, and I'm not predicting this because I think Purdy's look good. But Rob, we've seen quarterbacks come in. I, Mike White yesterday, and we've talked about it, it happened you know, last year. You can have a few big games, and then, and I'm not saying White is horrible. I'm just saying it showed he wasn't as good as he had looked. That's a and huge maybe that's game for Purdy. the Jets. Yes, that, that was a huge game, and yep. he was awful, Chris. Awful. Yep, yep. And so I I do think they're dangerous. Uh, are you picking them if they if they make the playoffs? Would you pick them to win I'm the NFC? With, I'm going to stick with my pick. Yep. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll claim it if they win it, but I'm, I'm yeah, going to tell you right now, I don't pick. expect but them you, but you expect to win 49ers. the NFC. You got the 49ers? Um, if they beat the I 49ers like in the first round, I like Philadelphia if they're healthy. Well, if they, beat, if they beat the Niners, then all bets are off, right? right. I mean, because, again, I think the only two teams, Rob, definitively at this moment that you would say would definitely be better than them would be Philadelphia and San Francisco. Right. And that's if Philly's healthy, which I'm assuming. And if Philly's be, not healthy, hurt. then it's no, just San not, Francisco, yeah. right? I, absolutely. Dallas is, you know, they're not. Nobody's afraid of them. Nobody. I don't believe in them. I don't think you believe in them. Um, Tampa, you know, I, I don't think they can run the table in the NFC. Minnesota, obviously. Obviously is not. Right. We already know chock that. full of holes, you know. And Seattle, if they well, Seattle wouldn't get in if Green Bay does. Who would be the other team? Is um, uh, 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 oh well, the teams in the NFC East. So the Giants, Giants. the Giants. Yeah, no, they're not getting out of the NFC. So 